Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, your home improvement and remodeling podcast, where the two most entertaining guys discuss the do's and don'ts in home construction and in the remodeling industry. Remember that you can nail it, paint it, or just tune into the show. How about that? Uh, Here are your hosts, Colin Shaw and Jimmy Driscoll. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs, the Thanksgiving edition. Yeah, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Everybody just probably got done enjoying their Thanksgiving dinner from the from yesterday because this airs on Friday. So, yeah. Yeah. Eating yeah. a jellied cranberry sauce. Of course they are. If not, you're know. the Antichrist. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Terrorists. That's it. Yep. Terrorists. Yep. They don't they don't love they don't love America. The only time you can use berry cranberry sauce is when you put it in the bread with the walnut. Oh, bread. OK. Yeah, that makes now, sense. That make, that's good. Yeah. But you still leave the twigs out, though, right? Yeah. OK, good. Uh, dude, why do people that that holiday cake with the freaking crayon fruit in it. <laughs> That's like the fruit cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like like mm. Jim. Uh, yeah. That's good stuff. What's his name? Jim. Uh, uh, Gaffigan. Gaffigan? Oh, yeah. yeah. He goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, he goes, cake. Mm, good. <laughs> fruit cake. <laughs> Nasty crap. <laughs> Nasty crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know what? what? Like, Jane's got this. She used to have this container full of that jellied fruit, mm. you know, for, for to make your own bread. She's okay. going to make it. Yeah. Dude, that I, I she's had that as long as I know, 15 <laughs> years. It has not changed color. Well, it's just still it's, sit- it's aging. <laughs> I, I, when we moved, we, I chucked it. I finally chucked it. <laughs> you know what's going to happen this, this Christmas? It's going to show up again. She's going to be like, show up again? Where where's did that my go? fruit? <laughs> it's been fermenting for 15 years. <laughs> this year was the year. This was the year. I was going to put it in the pot. Yeah, you, uh, why? Because you want to kill me. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't think anybody ever makes it for themselves. Don't they usually make it and give it away? And then that, that person yeah, gives it away. People, yeah, because the people they don't like. Yeah, <laughs> we could have this. Yeah. 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 We could have gotten you a lot of different things, yeah. but here's, no, but here's what we yeah. got you. I mean, yeah. This is some nasty crap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's go with margarine. <laughs> so what do we like for pies on uh, Thanksgiving? I usually like pecan, but I forget. What, yeah, I do what, too. Yeah, but with all the freaking butter and sugar and everything I else that's in it. Like, oh my God. Just my insulin, my pancreas just goes out of whack. <laughs> just one piece. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. all I can do. Yeah. I'm a pie. I'm a apple guy, blueberry pie kind yeah. of guy. My mother in law makes an amazing apple pie. How about apple crisp? Yeah, Jane makes too. a good apple mm. crisp. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Apples have been good this year. Have they? Yes. Oh, good. Really good. I've been enjoying those thoroughly. Hmm. Uh, Did not know it was a good year for apples. Yep. Yeah. Um. So I got to give you a little update on the house. Actually, I should yep. probably give you some pictures to post on my on my my house. Yeah. I talked to my buddy out there, Mr. Joe Wilchinski. Joe and I grew up together. Where he's like, he is my brother of a different mother. Yeah. Um, sadly, his mom, who I called Ma, passed away oh. uh, last year. Uh, actually, yeah, last year. Hmm. Um, wonderful lady, ninety-two years old. Wow, good big for Red her. Sox fan. No kidding. Yeah. But anyway, I, I talked to Joe the other day. I gave him a call. He's a handyman also. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, he's a pip. So we were talking and um, I was telling him because he listens to the show. Oh, good. He does. He listens to the Thanks, show. Joe. And um, he was, I was just telling him, he goes, you've been saying how great your house is. <laughs> and I go, it is. And the house is great. So yeah. um, we have a room that we want to turn into a, a, a living space. And it's, it's the patio that we had. So I started on it this week Mm -hmm. and I really had the intention with my buddy Al, we were going to have it all framed out and ready for windows and, you know, go in for the ready for the inspection. And that was not the case. Mm. Opened it up, took the beadboard ceiling down. Oh my God. The whole quarter into the whole thing is totally rotted out. Oh no, It's floating. So my buddy, Chris, who's a framer. Yeah. I can't, he was coming to my house and he stopped in and we were just, putting it together and he says yeah what i have to do i have to build a double two by four wall oh wow because i was trying okay. to save save a little money and insulation and yeah. stuff because but i need to build a double uh build a double two by four wall mirror what i have mm-hmm. so you know when i get my windows i'll just have to make extensions yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. okay but you have to do it because i can't catch the rafters there they were due to a there's nothing there wow it was held together it was held together by one four foot piece 
of pressure treated like one by two screwed mm. into this old rotted beam. That's all that was holding that corner up. Wow, isn't that crazy? Dude. And yet it did stay up. That yeah, but crazy. I had another four or five months into it. Yeah. Because water just totally it was a wooden roof that was the problem. Oh okay. so it, it had failed. Yeah. It was it was not exposed on the inside. It was beadboard there. Mm-hmm. It was all rotted inside. Ugh. And no um, no sign of water though coming in the beadboard or uh there was there was peeling yeah. paint okay and even the inspector when we were looking at the house goes you know we have you have a leak here we go yeah i know the the beams up in the attic had been sistered more more time more than once i should say like three of them they've been sisted they've been sisted on the sister hmm. so i'm like come on man yeah so that's all i gotta get ripped out and redone so that just kind of delays the project a little bit um, yep. but Hey, it's 61 years old. What the hell is something going to do? Right? <laughs> anyway, sit around on a Sunday and watch football. No. What are you, what are you a fool? Come on. What are you a fool? That's for the old guys. That's it. Right. I ain't old. Nope. No, nope. I'm nope. just mature. <laughs> mature. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll send the pictures of like, kind of like what I got, where I'm going. Yeah, definitely. Show yeah. that project, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big project. What you're undertaking? Yeah, so everyone says it'd be that. good. It'd be good to see of, the photos of it. You let a lot of work here. <laughs> Got a lot of work. <laughs> you know what everyone's been saying about the house? They've been saying, "Hey, the number the this is the one of the number one comments is you got a lot of work here." <laughs> and then the second one is. Are you flipping it? <laughs> All the people in town are like, are you flipping it? <laughs> no, we're not flipping it. No. There reminds me of another joke from Jim Gaffigan. He's like, when he when he's out with his kids, he's got five kids. Yeah. And somebody goes out to him and goes, boy, you got your hands full. He's like, not full enough to punch you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, why would you say that to somebody? It's like, go up to you and go, you got a lot of work here. Yeah. <laughs> like, Gee, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> glad you like the place. You're very observant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need some help. Why don't you come on over on a weekend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forget this. Yeah. Forget the football game. Just come on over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we can pass around a freaking tool bag. How yeah. about that? That'd be nice. Yeah. Sure. Um, what do you got going on, man? Same old thing, man. Same old thing. Getting ready for uh, Thanksgiving. My son's flying in tonight, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And then I got to drive down to his girlfriend's house in Fairfield tomorrow morning to go pick him up. Mm-hmm. He's flying into JFK. It was uh, actually the cheapest place going from his school to, to JFK was cheaper than going into Hartford or Providence or anything else. So, okay. yeah. And she lives down in Fairfield. So her mom's like, you know, we'll pick him up and you just come and get him on Wednesday morning. So mm-hmm. I take some, take a couple hours and sit in traffic with everybody else and drive down to Fairfield and pick yeah. him up. So that's great. Yeah. It'd be good to have him home. Of course. So I have a, I have an upcoming project besides the patio yep. that I have to, I'm probably going to work on over the winter. Um, all you people, that don't have uh, a cement foundation, but have like a field stone foundation like I have. Yeah. I have a couple options that I'm, I'm, I'm going with. Um, I actually like the look of the field stone mm-hmm. basement. It looks kind of cool, but um, they, they get, there's a lot of moisture, mm-hmm. you know, and they fail and they yeah. crack and you know, you can mortar it and then you can mortar it. And then again, it's going to, it's going to fail. Yeah. So I'm looking into, doing a uh, thorough seal like using a hopper okay spraying the spraying the wall yeah and then hitting it with a, the ugl or hitting it with what they call locks on it's a product from Sherwin williams it's a waterproofing agent mm-hmm. whether i do it with either a gray or a white um i don't think people are going to really you know be upset that i do that what's um what's the stuff you spray on is it just a foam thorough seal no thorough no. seal is just it's a it's a cement. Okay. Uh, it's like it's got a cement base for it. Yeah. Thorough seal is used a lot on. <clears throat> it was used a lot on commercial buildings. It um, it has a, it has like a a, a pocky texture, almost like almost like a popcorn ceiling type of thing. Okay. <clears throat> Depends on, again how much water you add to it. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it sticks to cement to cement. Okay. You know, it works pretty good because it's got like a little glue in it. Um. Is it like stucco? It's like a stucco. Okay. Yeah, All it's right. like a stucco. You can either brush it on with a heavy with a heavy cloth brush, yeah. you know, one of those like a wallpaper brush, yeah. which I've done before, or you can you can spray it on with a hopper. Anybody knows um, who's done it, you know, they'd be you know, 
send us a little info. I'd like to hear it. I've been watching some stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing because like uh, they're now being acknowledged as like they have a commercial out. Look at on YouTube. You can basically do everything on YouTube now. Sure. You know, if you want to do, you know, do it yourself. Yep. I have to say my son-in-law who moved up to Canterbury. Mm hmm. He could nail a bar of soap to a windowsill. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? I remember, yeah. And then he, you know, he bought this old 1700s farmhouse, huge. Mm-hmm. And the plumbers are coming in, the electricians are coming in, and then he, then he can't get them. And he's like, they're charging him so much money, a sure. ridiculous amount of money. He's like, wait a minute. Because he's intelligent. Yeah. He got on YouTube. He did it himself. Yeah. Did it all himself. Yeah. He roofed his roof, his wooden roof himself. Really? <laughs> roof. Now, ready for this? Yeah. He's got his own beehives. No, oh, does he? Yeah. yeah. He's tapping his trees. <laughs> yeah. He's making maple syrup. Nice. But yeah. Yeah. Does, he's weaving he his own too? baskets. Huh? Does he work? He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. He's working up in the Superior Court in Hartford. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. He does it all. Wow. Crime fighter. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey maker. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. Thank God. You too. How old is he? Young. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the energy. He's got the he's got the spunk. Yeah. Yep. Good for him. Well, when he's done with his house, have him go to your house. That's right. Yeah. Tell him he can tell me what to do. Right. It'd be perfect. It's like he doesn't. He, nothing holds him back. He yeah. just he just looks at it and learns it. You know, he's not afraid of any. He's not afraid of anything. That's good. Figures it out. That's good. Well, and if you're semi intelligent too, a lot of this stuff is common sense. You know, as long as you know the basics. And it's so bad because we know so many carpenters who are not who mm-hmm. don't have any carpent common sense. Right. That's, I mean, that's definitely, you can figure a lot of this stuff out if you just think about it. Yeah. You know, if you've got common sense, so. Problem solve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things too, is like when I was working on the, working on the patio, my buddy Alan was like, man, you're a problem solver. I go, yeah, this is what we got to do. <laughs> yeah. How are we going to do it? Yeah. So. Yeah. You either figure it out or give up, call somebody in. Call so, somebody else right. knows the hell yep. to do it. <laughs> one of the two. Well, if you, well, if you're at home and you've got a bag of ice on your head or you're, You've got you're getting a cast on your leg. You better call somebody else. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, excavating equipment. Mm-hmm. I think that's on the rise, man. I think a lot of more homeowners are buying them. Are they? Yeah. I know. Huh. I think John Deere stock is way up. Yeah, I've heard that, actually. People, are buying, that to me. people yeah. are buying the, the, the small tractors, and the, yep. which are cool. Yeah, because they come with like all different parts and stuff. Yep. Yeah, you can buy like kits. But I, my suggestion to anybody who's going to buy that, make sure that they know where this is a service place, or if you've got a neighbor who knows how to fix that stuff. Yep. Oh my god, when the hydraulics go on that kind of stuff, <sighs> it's got to be so. Oh wow, it's so messy. It's yeah just everywhere. Oh. And homeowners, be careful too. Make sure you know what's buried in your yard. Always call before you dig. Yeah, call before you dig. It's a state law in Connecticut. I don't know if it is a nationwide thing, but I know you have to call them 811. Yeah. Call them, call before you dig. They show you exactly where everything's laid out. Wow. Where it's coming in your property. Yeah. Because you don't want to find out there's an underground service, electrical service. So I could I could tell this. And my buddy, this goes out to my buddy Shane Scalero, who never listens to the show, but will now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. He listens to the show. Um, he's a union carpenter. He's a he risks his life. He's a pile driver. Oof. Of the things. Yeah, really? Yeah. He was working wow. up, at the, up at the electric boat, driving the piles. And wow. But a story you want to talk about called before you dig. Uh, this was over 15 years ago. He was working with me and he twisted out. He tore all his ligaments in his knee, his ACL, everything. He messed himself up mm. uh, jumping off a off a freaking three foot platform and he hit a two by four and his foot twisted it and nailed it off Ugh. so he's in a he's in like a full leg cast right yeah. brace he's up in his home in canterbury he was living up in canterbury at the time and he old house and there's like an old farm barn in the backyard so he's out there like with his cane whatever and he's got a shovel and he's digging i forgot what he was out there digging for but he was out near he had to do something and he's, he goes down with a shovel and stuff Ting! He's like, what the hell? He hit. This wasn't even deep in the ground. Yeah. He got like maybe a quarter shovel full. Ding! Hit like a huge, huge over 220 line that was Oof. running from the telephone line 
to the back of the barn. Wow. That was it was totally exposed wire. Wow. He's lucky he wasn't dead. Absolutely. He hit it and he called Eversource, you know? Yeah. And they were like, dude, I'm, I'm talking to a dead man here. Yeah. He should have been dead. Wow. Because he's scary. Because he nicked the wire. Oof. That, that's Shane's luck. Is it? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Shane doesn't have. Yeah. Shane has good luck. He's got 29 lives yeah. right now. Good for oh, him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay, Sean. There you go. There you go. So, um, what else? So, I got something I want to bring up. Go ahead. This was uh, through our producer, Marissa. She was talking about it, and I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Have you heard about what's going on with Zillow? Not at all. Okay. So, neither, neither did I. So, the, I, I looked up this uh, article that Marissa sent me from NPR. Um, it, the headline is Zillow will stop buying and renovating homes and cut 25% of its workforce. So I guess what Zillow has been doing is they've been buying up houses so that they could go ahead, renovate them and flip them. Yeah. This is not the time to do that because of all of the expenses, the delays in materials. So they end up having to close 25% fire 25% of its workforce because they can't sell the houses because they can't get them fixed up. Oh. And it's called I buying, which is instant buying. So I guess that's a, it's a form of buying houses. And what they do is they try to give you a lesser price for your house than you might normally sell it for, but you don't have to show the house and you don't have to go through inspection or anything else. They just give they you the money for cash right there, yeah. there. Right. Yeah. So it's like an as is type of thing. You, you've gotten the, I'm sure people have gotten the envelopes and I've got postcards saying we want to buy a house. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's kind of like the same thing. Yeah. So I guess what they did was they bought 9,680 homes and only sold 3,000 of them. Wow. They lost $304 million in the third quarter last year. Holy year. shit. Yeah. That's Who's incredible. getting fired? That's what I want to know. Because <laughs> they, 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 they started this thing called Zillow Offers, which is, like I said, an instant buying or an eye buying uh, portion of their company. And then they decided, uh oh, there's a you know, backlog of renovations and closing caused by labor and supply shortages. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about that. Totally. They should, they should totally. To the podcast. Totally poor planning. <laughs> yes. It's like, if like, you're going into battle. Yeah. If you even just study war. These guys, what are they, what's the first thing that they go for when they're invading a country? Why are they invading the country? Because they're going for the resources to fuel the army, the, right. the iron, the gas, the fuel, the petroleum yeah. to move their tanks and their equipment and, yeah. their, you know, and food for their soldiers and all that stuff. That's what they're going for. It's the same thing. If you're going to, you know, it's just, that's just common sense. Somebody who worked for there, or a bunch of people who worked for there were definitely, they were just looking at numbers. Right. It was a, it was a strict numbers game. Because they they knew that houses were selling, and it was a good market to sell, but they didn't take take into consideration all of the supply shortages, the labor shortages, all the other crap that we've been dealing with, mm -hmm. you know, during the pandemic. That's not going to get you to the point to be able to resell the house. Right. So here's another kicker too. Yeah. Kind of on the same same plane because my friends did this. I'm not going to mention their names because they wouldn't want me to mention them on this one. <laughs> but they listen to people. People have been buying extra property, mm -hmm. right? Yep. To do what? To make money on it. Right. Airbnb them, right? Yep. Okay. So, my friends, great idea, great plan, great spot, great place for everything was five star what they did. Great planning. Got it all set up, put all the money into the place, except they did not in investigate property management because it was too far from where they lived mm -hmm. five hours away <clears throat> mm -hmm. property management company was screwing them really oh yeah screwing them out billing them out for stuff they didn't even do Ugh. you caught them fired them wow got no property management yeah if you don't have property management you can't have an airbnb right. unless it's at your house right and you're renting out a room right but if you get property that's far far away yep you're screwed yeah you can't you can't do it. No, there's no way. No, you have to have somebody there doing it for you. Yeah. Watching it overseeing it. Yeah. So, yeah. And part of the other thing, I guess, about, you know, what people don't think about is, with the eye buying is you're you don't know anything about that house that you're buying. The homeowner 
knows everything about that house. They know what skeletons are in the closet. They know everything that's going on with that thing. And if they're willing to do an I buy, that means they're having trouble selling it because there's some reason, whether the market isn't good in their neighborhood or what. I mean, like they said, the way that this probably could have succeeded if we didn't have the supply shortages and all is if, you know, Zillow went in and bought all these houses, but they were cookie cutters. They were all the exact same. That's the only way this makes sense. When you start taking a house from this region and this neighborhood and this over here, how the hell do they know? They can't keep up with all that, Mm -hmm. you know, and how much materials cost here in Connecticut versus Florida. Right. You know, all that stuff. It's just, I was dumbfounded when Marissa told me about it and I'm glad she sent me the, uh, the article because I had to, I just had to read it. And uh, I was just like, wow, somebody has to be getting fired for that. Mm-hmm. Whoever, whoever said, Hey, I got an oh, idea. Oh, I'd <laughs> yeah. say the whole shit in Shaboom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for letting us lose $304,000. Yeah. That's so what great. What do you do with all those houses that are sitting there? So they said they're going to continue to put them out there to be sold. Um, but they're, they're not actively buying any more houses right now. It's like, yeah, yeah. Kidding. Why yeah, would you? Yeah. Uh, I got to tell you this, I gotta tell you this, this, this quote that this guy did, uh, they, they talked to a guy, um, he's a housing economist at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Bill Wheaton was his name. And, uh, it says the owners know what skeletons lie in the house and what the local market is like. The people coming in from Zillow don't know squat. <laughs> Yeah, like, they do. Oh, like, that was that was put very nicely. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and right to the point. Right. Yeah, they don't know squad is right. Right. How would they? Right. Yeah. It was a, a, just and especially a, if you're buying houses, mm. you got to you got to know that you got to know what's going on in the town. Yeah. Is your employment are people unemployed? You know, is there is it business booming? Right. You know, wh- how close is it to the highway, the railroads, the trains, right. transportation? What's the school systems like? Exactly. There's so many different things that go into yeah. it. It's like. How do you just buy 10,000 homes and expect to just renovate them and sell them right away? Yeah. You know, they're, they're losing 6,400 people. If you fire. were smart enough, if, if you were smart enough, well, you, if you're going to do that kind of a thing, mm-hmm. I mean, like the investors, when they moved into upstate New York, or, I mean, upstate New York, I'm sorry, upper Manhattan, up in Harlem and everything else, mm-hmm. you know, there were a bunch of developers who got together, probably got to the resources like, say just in for instance harvey windows or something like that you go listen this is the plan this is what we're going to need this is what we're projected for so many windows so much siding so much roofing yeah so they're all prepared they've got an idea then they go to their investors and they're like boom you know it's all laid out sure boom yeah let's go i think this was a very jackrabbit compulsive mm-hmm. hey you know let me give everybody starbucks here i got a great idea bang i love it yeah not really well thought out. Not thought out well at all. So, yeah, I thought you might find that. That's interesting. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Well, I have to say, I can say this back in in uh, 1980, around 1980, the president of Boston University, uh, Silver, was a Silver, Silver or Silver was his name, uh, the president of BU, mm-hmm. the guy who ran it. Um, they got involved and they bought a lot of real estate in Boston mm. for BU. Okay. For housing. Yep. Right. Yep. Getting ready for it. They didn't get the enrollment like they thought. Oh, no. So they had all these buildings. Yeah. Sitting there. Yeah. You know, so that's that's when Reagan was in office. Mm-hmm. And that's when we hit the recession. Yeah. Right. Yep. A dollar was worth at the time. I think it was like 20 two cents or something mm, like that. That's okay. what the American dollar was worth. Wow. So the, everything was just sitting there. Yeah. <clears throat> I was really supposed to go to another college mm-hmm. and it didn't work out. And, you know, BU had this very strict uh, audition policy. You have to be here, there. And then they had this really strict. They had such an open enrollment. <laughs> like I showed up and I was just <laughs> like, to be or not to be. You got it, kid. You got it. You're in. Let's go. <laughs> You're going places. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I'm wow! Like, beautiful, Jim. Beautiful. Yeah. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Uh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Show despair. Oh dear. Oh my. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. See you next year or the next semester. <laughs> oh my god. So anyway. All right. So that's uh, that's all I got right now, man. Yeah. We just we, we you and I got our heads down. Just. We're just working. Show get through it. Our ass. Get through it. Get through. We're going to get through. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving. I'm sure everyone's had a great Thanksgiving. Right? I hope so. Fat and happy. 
Yes. Plenty of gravy, please. Yeah, you know, and I don't need all of those side dishes and stuff. I, I'm happy with turkey, cranberry sauce, and stuffing. That's all I need. No gravy? No. No. no why? What is wrong with you? Why would you put gravy How on am it? I doing a podcast with you without any gravy? <laughs> why? No. I mean, unless it's dry, then yeah, I'll put gravy on it. But if it's juicy, I don't need it. Then you don't taste the turkey. I'm you just, just taste real, the gravy. I am just... I'm oh, so Jesus. surprised. There we go. I am so surprised at you. <laughs> gravy. I can understand not having a gravy with sardines. I get that. <laughs> or black olives. I get yeah. that. All right. But gravy, Joe. I, I'm not saying I hate gravy. I'm just saying you I don't. Better not it. hate gravy. I, I don't hate oh, this gravy. This show is over. <laughs> All right. This show's a fuck. I hate gravy. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So next week. We have Dave joining us. Uh, he's with Platinum Lighting, and he's from Canada. Yeah, and he likes gravy. <laughs> we'll see. He better. All right. I'll hang up. We'll I'll have the to show check. Will be over. We'll have to check the cranberry sauce, the gravy. Uh, cranberry sauce. And uh, then I, mustard I, I, or ketchup. It's, this is all about the gravy, dude. <laughs> now it's about the gravy. It's all about the gravy. All right. They're from Canada, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is the United States. <laughs> what does that mean? That they don't like gravy. They're from Canada. I don't care. <laughs> they don't do Thanksgiving. Uh, nope. I wonder if they eat turkey. <laughs> I wonder if they do. <laughs> we'll find out. I know they eat Canadian <laughs> bacon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll We're going to see you next mustard. week. I got to get out of here. All right. <laughs> see ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.